Hello, my name is Narsimhan Balakrishnan and I'm a PhD candidate at Northwestern University. Today I'm excited to be talking to you about some work that involves machine learning and glycomic analysis for the identification and discrimination of plant gum species used in historical artworks. This is a collaboration with the Art Institute of Chicago and the Center for Scientific Studies in the Arts. The motivation for these works lies in polysaccharide plant gums, which have been used as paint binders for watercolors and manuscripts, such as the ones shown below on the slide. Identifying these gums from these artworks helps us better understand how artists uh, work in terms of technique, how they choose materials, so on and so forth. The challenges associated with this kind of undertaking are quite a few. Previous analyses involving analytical chemistry pipelines and characterization using FDIR or GCMS have been challenging and have provided uncertain results as to the materials used, mostly because those techniques are not specific, specific to a particular species of gum. And it is important in the context of taxonomy that we know kind of the hierarchy of genus species and so forth. So our goal is to develop a combined experimental and computational workflow for this determination or identification of these origins of plant gums used in artwork. So our approach is to use a glycomic analysis, which involves enzymatic digestion of samples that could just be reference gums or samples drawn from artworks, derivatization of them, followed by putting them through a MALDI time of flight mass spectrometer, from which we get a lot of mass, spectrum, mass spectra, which is used as data to train a machine learning model, which we then use to both make inferences about the samples themselves and also predictions when faced with samples of unspecified origins or doubtful references. So the training data we have is MALDI mass spectra from 100 plus reference gum samples. These are gum samples for which we do have annotations as to what species they are. And these samples are from three big different genera, which are Acacia, Astragalus, and Prunus. And our modeling approach, once the data is cleaned, is to use a dimension reduction technique called TSNE. So how TSNE works is you have high dimensional data in which, in this case, it would be the intensities for hundreds or maybe even thousands of uh, ions over an M by Z range across hundreds of samples. And TSNE basically reduces this to a visualizable two dimensions where similar points are hopefully grouped together and dissimilar points are further away in this low dimensional embedding. So without further ado, let me get to the first level of results. So the first thing we did was put all of the data from all of the three different genera we had through our TSNE model that we trained. And what we can see is that this global model does achieve the reasonable separation of the three different genera. And we can go one level deeper with models that are specific to individual genuses. So let's take a look at Acacia. And I would like to point out here that Seal and Senegal, which are both the most commonly found species in artwork, but also have the most commercial relevance, achieve perfect separation in this low dimensional embedding. So it is possible to discriminate Seal and Senegal, these two important species using our approach. And adding on some of the less represented species of Acacia, we do find that there is reasonable clustering within them as well. And another point of comfort is that Acacia stenocarpa, which was marked separately from Seal, clusters with Seal because they are synonyms for each other. And in addition to using these models to cluster individual species or genuses of gums, we also want them to make predictions so we could add, so we could add samples of unspecified annotations or doubtful references to see where they fall on this embedding. And in this case, I would like to point your attention to the three that I've marked, the pole E, nil I, and nil E, which were marked as doubtful but they do fall within Acacia, which is what their genus is. And if we were to take it one step further and see where they fall on the species gene specific models, we see that they do fall close enough to the clusters that are relevant to their individual species. And to conclude, we have a combined experimental and computational workflow for this identification and discrimination problem that we've described. 
Our TSNE embedding does achieve genus and species level separation and clustering to an extent. And predictions on data that are either unspecified in terms of reference or doubtful with regards to the annotation do match what one might expect. And to take this work further, we would like to use these learned models on samples that we get in the future from artwork, historical artwork, as well as extend this modeling pipeline to identify potential mixtures of gums or polysaccharide gums that might have been used in artwork. With that, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators at the Art Institute, the funding sources for a lot of the experiments, the Richard Lounsbury Foundation and the Center for Scientific Studies in the Arts, as well as my lab for all, the help, for all their help in this work. With that, I would also like to thank you for your attention and I'm open for any questions.